Hello everybody, my name is Avanaflom, welcome back to Dragon Age Awakening. This is going to be the last video on this series. Before I move on to Witch Hunt. So, Sigru, come over here, sweetie. Open that. That's a good little dwarfy. Such a cute dwarf. And over here? Nothing. Can't go over there. Let's see. I can very much just. I don't even. At this point, I don't even need to act or something. I just need to Got it. run through. <laughs> And not run to the left. Like, there's always something he wants to do. For some god awful reason. Yeah. Twisted creatures. Got it. That's one thing I'm going to use. Filling, filling these things up with crystals and activating them is going to help me out in the final battle. This dude. All right, all right. I'm trying to look at this. Final battle for you. I can't quite see what she is. Anywho, time to just kill everything inside. Uh, that's pretty more. I'll get him. Hey, first. impressive that you not only decapitated him with a dagger but decapitated him with a dagger while his head was much higher than yours that is impressive Siguru oh here we go And so we meet again. No, Uther. That is not how this must begin. I owe you an apology, Commander. When last we met, I intended to explain... myself. Fate, however, intervened. I escaped, you mean. I restrained you, only to prevent the misunderstanding... that occurred with the rest of your order misunderstanding <laughs> is that what you call it i sent the withered to ask for the gray warden's help 
I should have anticipated that you might view our approach as an attack. I am rarely able to judge how your kind will react. It was most unfortunate. Unfortunate? You took those men and bled them dry. The Grey Wardens that were brought to me were already dead. I took their blood just as I took yours, because I had little choice. Things have not gone as I planned. I only ask that you hear me out. Should you still wish to slay me afterwards, you may try. Fine, I will hear you out. My kind has ever been driven to seek out the old gods. This is our nature. When we find one, a blight is begun. Each time we attack your surface lands and you fight back until we are defeated, to break the cycle, my brethren must be freed of their compulsion. For that, I need Grey Warden blood. How would you free the Darkspawn? In order to become what you are, you drink the blood of my kind. To transform. Similarly, we must transform. I have created a version of your joining that uses the blood of Grey Wardens. You take the taint into yourself. What we take is your resistance. That is how my brethren are freed. In your blood lies the key to their immunity against the call of the old gods. I like my blood where it is, in my veins. Okay, so glitch right there. How do the Darkspawn change afterwards? Once they are freed, the Darkspawn think for themselves. They speak, they act. Some, however, have reacted poorly. They are flawed and they rage against me. The mother gathers them to stop me, and she seeks to stop you. I cannot defeat the mother alone. And I cannot free the Darkspawn unless she is defeated. Our goals are the same. Kill this creature now, lest it make things worse than they already are. Do what is right and do not waver. This reeks of stupid. The last thing we need is more Darkspawn thinking for themselves. Help me kill the mother. And after it is done, I will leave to continue my work. What is the, this mother exactly? My most flawed creation. Freedom drove her mad, and she has poisoned the minds of the others. She has influence with the ones who have not been freed, and she gathers them as an army. I do not seek to rule, my brethren. I only seek to release them from their chains. How did you become freed? I was born as I am, an outsider amongst my kind. Why? I do not know. Why do some of your kind become Grey Wardens? Why do some possess magic? I have no answers. Perhaps the other Darkspawn don't want to be free. And how would they know when the choice has been deprived of them? Without choice, there is only one path before them and that leads to the Blight. I believe there is another way. Stealing blood from wards is perverse. I thought it little different from your order's use of darkspawn blood. We both do what we must in response to the blight. The first blood came from Uther, freely given. She was a Grey Warden, as you are, and joined us many years ago. Very well. You have an ally. What if he's wrong? What if this doesn't stop the blight, but makes something worse? No! No! This is a monster! I can't let you do this! Don't you want to stop the blights once and for all? I do, but... Uh, I hope you know what you're doing. Sigrun may agree, but I do not. This monster murdered countless Grey Wardens. They must be avenged. You'll have to trust my lead, Justice. I cannot trust it, but I will follow it, for now. Thank you, Commander. 
I realize what a leap of faith this is for you. I hope that I prove worthy of your trust. The mother lies ahead, Warden. I cannot approach her physically. Her children protect her from my power. But when you reach her, I will do whatever I can to help you. You have my promise. What? Oh, yeah. Why are you watching that without? No. When would I have had the chance? You watched the others without me. What do you mean I watched the others? I haven't had a chance to watch that yet. So what have I got so far? I got Architect's Pyre. Power of Trauma. Power of Flame. And then there's a Tower of Healing. That I need to activate. Vestment of Earthamia. Enders. Can I get you a last yeah, That's weird. Can you get off my back? It looks gray when a woman wears it. But on Enders, it's like. Your pants a lot. I'm right here. Sounds better than later. On your guard, Rich. Oh, here. Baby, come on, I barely even feel that. Hey, so wimpy. I shall pour some points of that for the heck of it. And here. Crystal. Twisted creature. Someone's going to fall. No 
Attack! Stop towards the left! Too much. Did he hurt the other Twisted creatures. Eh, yeah, I'm searching the childer. to loot this corpse, not talk to you. Well, I'm... S I'm sorry, Spell. Where do you want to be cast? Is it time to kill something? Freaking miss one. God damn it. Gotta run back because I'm going into this with a healing duder. For sure. Toxin extract. Armored ogre. Damn it. He only had money. Money is useless to me at this juncture. One area. Then I never need it again. Again. Again, I never need it again. How did I not loot that guy? I hate having to double back because I missed something. I 
Let's go. I assume it saves once I'm in there. Yep. And there she is. So fucking ugly. I think I see the Illuvian behind her. Nope, it's not there. How odd. Now the pieces fall into place. The Grey Warden comes, the instrument of the Father. Oh, and the Father, he is but a shadow. Oh, how my children protect me. How they love me. I have told you many times, Mother. I am not the Father. I am simply the architect. It does not change what you are! You took away that beautiful music, left us with nothing. It was a mistake to free you. It has left you with madness. I am truly sorry. Even were she not mad, the mother would still be disgusted. Ah. But perhaps the Warden would like to hear how it was that the Father began the Blight. You want the source of the Archdemon? The one who brought all our kind to the surface? Here he is! I was correct. All of these creatures are irredeemable fiends. Ah, there it is then. Unfortunate. I did find the old god, Athemiel. But I did not wish another Blight. I attempted my joining ritual. My hope was that this would free all Darkspawn, unravel the curse from its source. Alas, I was unlucky. Do you even think about the repercussions of your actions? It is not the way of the Grey Wardens to do what must be done. In the name of combating the Blight, the Blight is a menace, both for your people and for mine. To end it requires sacrifice and risk. And how lonely the father was. How terrible to be the outcast, the outsider. He claims he wishes the Darkspawn to be free, but what he truly wants is to correct them. However you feel about what I have done, the mother is mad. She cannot be allowed to... Be gone, Shadow. Ready have. And now the hero is alone. Oh, the mother knows your ways. You will not let her be, no, not after what she's done. So it Why must is it in end. this lighting? It all must come. My armor looks black down. instead of the color it normally looks. Perhaps we will hear the song again when we die. Oh, let it come. Let it come. Yeah. Twisted uh, all right, all right. Ah, oh, crap. Have time for your daily dose of death. Boy. Boy. Oh. Let me out. Let me out. Summon gnome. Let me out. Urgh. Damn it. I didn't place the fucking crystal. Oh, how did you miss that? I don't know. I ran all the way back to get the crystal. I didn't fucking place it. My god. Uh.
Get on it. I'm going straight for the mother. Architect power work. All right, all right. Okay. Okay. Stop I missing. Ladder, so you can get off my back. Stop fucking. Get on. Oh god, dude. Lovely. I'll blast these threatens into next year. As quick as I can. I'll get on. Sorry, but I got three superb health potions, and it's saying I don't have any health potions. Now it's better than later. There we go, she's gone. She's dead. And I pull out a dagger for this. Instead of using my sword. The mage animation is cool. Yeah. yeah. But with the uh, mage, you, you use your magic to just kind of fry her. It's awesome. At the death of the mother, the remaining darkspawn forces scattered and, and fled back into the deep roads. The razor name or anything came to an abrupt end. The architect apparently kept his word, gathering his remaining disciples to follow the rest of their kind back underground. 
Those great wards and other nations were appalled to hear of the architect's continued existence, but were unable to track him down despite years of effort. Some within the Order have claimed that the architect's survival guarantees another blight, and yet the deep roads have lately been quieter than any can recall. Most have resignedly decided that it is now in the Maker's hands. Word of the Grey Warren's heroic salvation of Amaranthine spread like wildfire. When the magnitude of the losses at Vigil's Keep came to light, sympathy drove generous donations from all over Ferelden into the region's coffers. Amaranthine was restored to her former glory within a year, Vigil's Keep in five. Because of the Warden's support for law and order in Amaranthine, Constable Lydon and his men were able to distribute the smugglers' goods to the battered survivors in the grueling days that followed the Darkspawn defeat. The Darkspawn messenger, set free after joining the Wardens in the Battle of Amaranthine, struck out on his own. The city soon buzzed with stories of a cloaked but lisping figure who aided travelers in danger. At the same time, reports of isolated cases of the Darkspawn disease emerged. No one connected the two. Hmm. Although the war devastated many farms in the Arling, all agreed the loss would have been greater without soldiers for protection. The farm holders developed a certain reverence for the Warden Commander, as well as an ongoing reliance on the Great Wardens for order and protection. Dirk, one of the pranksters behind the Blight Orphan scam, was fortunate enough to survive the Battle of Amaranthine. The unconditional generosity of the Blight Orphan's mysterious benefactor inspired him to establish a legitimate charity dedicated to children orphaned in the attack. His sweetheart, Melisse, eventually bore him to rascals. That's the lady you had to put the scarecrow outside her house. Mm -hmm. Vigil's Keep stood alone against a horde of Darkspawn. The mother's forces outnumbered the Vigil's defenders many times it was over. But the sturdy dwarven walls proved impervious to any boulder an ogre could throw. The Vigil's soldiers, clad in silverite, each felled a dozen Darkspawns before they died. The vigil held one night, then two, then a week, and eventually the attacking horde broke upon her walls. The keep developed an almost mythic reputation. The few survivors immortalized in song and legend. Peace, uh, peace allowed the wardens to replenish their numbers. Soon, vigil's keep bore a capable army with wardens at its core. From their ranks emerged new heroes to challenge threats to Amaranthine and all of Ferelden. Th through taxes and levies, the vigil was rebuilt. Years later, Valdrick Glavinac stood on the battlements and pronounced that the defenses were acceptable. He would never speak more highly of any human engineering. Dark whispers of conspiracy against the Wardens fell silent after a rash of accidents and disappearances culminated in the apparent suicide of Ban Esmeral. The nobles of Amaranthine remained dutiful. Some even suggest they were cowed into submission. Among the main legends of that that the vigil spawned was one of the great heroes of the next age, a sheep herder turned soldier by the name of Sir Alec the Valiant, who eventually founded an order of knights that lasted a thousand years. Too bad we never frickin' hear of these guys. Mm -hmm. The commander's blade, Vigilance, crafted from the bones of an ancient dragon, was boldly stolen by Antiven Crows. The blade changed hands many times thereafter, with some master swordsmen pursuing the weapon their entire lives. Some claim that this legendary blade has had a life of its own and that its power is steadily growing. <clears throat> like, seriously. First of all, why would the crows be stupid enough to try and come after the warden again? Second, how do they get it? Again. Like, this is the warden. There's no... The only way I can think of they could get is if they got it off of his corpse. Uh, got it off of their corpse. And that's not going to happen. Dworkin Glavanak further refined his larium sand explosives, but let the wardens employ after Cunari mercenaries tried to assassinate him. Although the dwarven bombardier took his secrets with him, the day he uh, the learned say he left clues for others to follow in his footsteps. The Vigil soldiers, wearing the distinctive silverite armor that Master Wade crafted, came to be known as the Silver Order. Under the tutelage of the Wardens, the Silver Order developed into one of Ferelden's most revered military forces, a lasting memory of the Vigil's famous commander. With Valana and the Architect gone from the region, the Pilgrim's Path began to see traffic again. The massacre of the militiamen and the merchants, however, led to hostilities between the neighboring human settlements and any Dalish clans that passed by. One human village villager soon kidnapped and murdered a Dalish child. 
The clans reacted by giving the Winding Wood a wide berth, but both sides know that at some point the elves will return for revenge. A few years after Calhoun was emptied of Darkspawn, Orzammar began sending expeditions to rediscover the knowledge of smithing that had been lost within the Tide. Eventually, House Helmy decided that Calhoun was too important to be abandoned. At tremendous cost of dwarven lives, they cleared the tunnels leading to Calhoun of all Darkspawn, making the road between Orzammar and the fortress safe again. Calhoun was reclaimed for Orzammar once and for all. As promised, Valdric and Dworkin presented Orzammar's Shaperit with a stone marker that told of how Calhoun's castless had taken up arms against the Darkspawn. The Commander of the Grey was invited to Orzammar as a guest of honor at a feast commemorating the defenders of Calhoun. The Shaper read the names of the castles off the marker, then presided over a ceremony to return them to the stone as befitted warriors of their, of their statue. In, the time the, in time, the Arling began to forget the tales of apparitions in the Black Marsh. <coughs> and ever so slowly, settlers drifted into the region. Scholars said the veil was still thin and thus the area is still dangerous, but the people only cared that there were no longer frightened whispers in the shadows. The village was slowly rebuilt. Twice the Baroness's mansion was rebuilt and occupied, once by a wealthy merchant, another time by an Orlesian mage. Both died mysteriously. Afterwards, the mansion was torn down and co um, completely, and the site left untouched. Anders remained with the Grey Wardens a few years longer, training the Order's next generation of mages. But when the Circle Tower called on him to deliver a lecture on the nature of the architect, much to the Templar's dismay, Anders told the commander of the Grey that his time with the Wardens was over. And yet, not two months later, Anders returned to the Order. After that, the Wardens were his home and his lasting companions. Until someone made him give up his cat. Then he was gone for good. When the, yeah, when the walls of Vittles Keep were breached, my eye, the surviving defenders watched in horror as a section of stone collapsed on Velana. When the rubble was later cleared, however, there was no body. Velana was just gone. That's odd. Nathaniel managed to survive the battle at Vigil's Keep. Lead. Oh, that's right. I usually brought Velana with me. Not Anders. Nathaniel managed to survive the battle at Vigil's Keep, leading a spirited defense at the last, in the last minutes to protect his family home. Why show him with two daggers? He was a bowman. That ferocity impressed many of his fellow soldiers who hoisted him to their shoulders and paraded him around the courtyard when the battle was done. After spending a number of years with the wardens, Nathaniel realized the life was not for him. He said goodbye to his sister Delilah and his new nephew and then left to seek his fortune. Apparently not before going to Kirkwall and meeting the champion. Because he was still with the wardens then. In time, that nephew became a Grey Warden himself, an, an emulation of Nathaniel, then rose to Warden Commander. He brought honor to the Howe name once again. Justice served the Grey Wardens for many years, remaining in touch with Aura, the widow of Kristoff. She grew uncomfortable with the body's decay, however, and the day she told Justice she could see him no longer was the day he left the Order. Justice wished his comrades well, then Kristoff's body slumped to the ground, and dead. Aura finally had a body to mourn. If the spirit itself remains alive, it has not shown itself. That's slightly different from what I normally get with him. Normally it says that afterwards he went to Aura's doorstep and smiled and then he collapsed. When, with the mother dead, Sigrun seemed to lose her purpose. She withdrew from her friends in the Order and spoke to them less and less each day. One morning, Sigrun was simply absent, her bed made and her trunk emptied. A young recruit who had been up in the night said she had left for her calling, gone to finish what she started in Calhoun. At Vigil's Keep, Ogren rallied a last-minute defense of the gate, taking on two ogres simultaneously to allow others time to regain the courtyard. He eventually passed out from blood loss, and when he awoke weeks later, nobody was more surprised than he to discover that he had been credited as a hero. Two ogres at once. Ogren continued to regale young warden recruits with tales of his prowess in both battle and bed. The second half fabricated completely. 
His drinking games prompted at least one recruit to declare that she'd rather reattempt the joining than lift another mug. Felsa returned to Fizzle's Keep several times to see Ogryn, usually bringing their toddler as well. Ogryn's ability to act seriously wore on her, however, and her visits dwindled, then stopped altogether. If Ogryn missed her or his child, he never showed it. Which I could have faked if he would just have fucking opened up to his friend. As for the savior of Ferelden, he did not remain as commander of the Grave for long. The Darkspawn were no longer a real concern. Their blight well and truly over. It was time for him to move on. Some claimed the commander headed west into her lake, chasing after the dark-haired sorceress who had fought alongside him during the blight. Whether he found her or not, he certainly did not return to Vigil's Keep. And so that was Awakening. Bleh. No music? Yeah, still no freaking music. You didn't notice that before? No, okay, yeah. So yeah, that's done. All that's left to do, and there's actually time to do it, is, finish, is play Witch Hunt. Which I don't know if that's going to take one or two videos. But I'm going to see if I can get it done tonight. So for now, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next episode. Later.